first episode of Rock Talk. You everybody who watch it on Q Minor. We got John Keevil here from Warbringer. We got Clayton Cagle from Apothecary and Hatchet. And hey. then we got a special guest, we didn't say anything about this because he was totally planned from the beginning. We got Chris from Jayhawk Films, the man, the meme, the legend. <laughs> Give her boys. So we are on, we are live, we should be on Facebook, we should be on Twitch, I think YouTube we have some issues with, I'm not sure if that's been fixed up yet, but you guys can join us actually in the Zoom chat, it should be posted on my band's page as I know, um, and I'm not sure if Carlos has posted the link yet or whatever, or if Varun has posted yet, you guys want to go get that Zoom link, uh, go ahead and post it in chat, somebody should be able to answer you guys, you guys can answer some questions, you can pop into chat, I'll hang out during this COVID-19 pandemic. Let's chill. Let's have a beer. Or if you're me and you don't drink, you have a water. <laughs> I'm, I'm having coffee at like 7 p.m. so I can stay amped for this. Uh, or become nice. increasingly amped. But we, um, we have John, a Oh, I, I don't know what I'm going to fucking talk about. I, I mean, you guys have your logos behind you. I feel like with my theme, I should have a giant shrub with the spiky W shape, you know, like. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> that gave, I didn't even know that was an option. I was just like, ah, bedroom's fine. Bedroom. I never thought that was an option. I didn't either. know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, hey, my green screen. And he's like, it's not a green screen at all. No, no it's not even a green screen. Yeah. No, it's, it's better than a green screen. It's uh. I, I don't know, but he had a Soviet Union flag behind him, and like you know, <laughs> that's how he rolled into this whole. That's the first shot of Cesar Quentin in this whole thing. <laughs> the fucking international playing like a tank parade rolls by, you know. Well, tank there was Captain parade. America beforehand, but we didn't get, want to get copyright of it. Oh, yeah, I tried. To, I was going to play the movie, but it was like you know, we can't, we can't do that. We get copyright strike. <laughs> will they? Will they, will they get you for something like this? Oh yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, we are yeah. taking donations. That's actually a great segue. We're taking donations. The donations get split up between the bands, and it also goes to help with Bay Area live music. In that case, since they're go they're donations to dudes, would they be bro nations? They're bro nations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just bro making nations sure we're linguistically correct here. You know? <laughs> 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 All right. So, so uh, are there questions? What are, what are we doing, gentlemen? Uh, uh, good to I'm see not you. seeing any right now. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's been it's been a quick minute since I've seen you, John. The last time I see, saw you, I didn't have my bachelor's degree. Oh, you finished. Yeah. That's fucking sweet. Did you finish yeah. during COVID nineteen? Yeah, I finished like literally when I when I posted. Um, I just graduated, and I popped over into your live chat on Friday, and I was like, "Cool, <laughs> I'm gonna go come over here and celebrate with John. This is perfect." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. Congrats, dude. That's fucking that's fucking quite excellent. What's yeah, dude? Computer science. Oh, fancy. Yeah, so I can fix the Wi-Fi. I know how to turn a Wi-Fi on and off. I know how to turn it on and off. <laughs> you have a Anybody out there is hiring, hire me. I need money. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Said every American in 2020. Right. Oh my <laughs> Chris doesn't yeah. know anything about that. They don't have COVID in Canada. They don't oh. have problems in Canada. No, no, we don't. We just have free health care we will roll around to. I don't get no. sick of it. <laughs> Mountains. <I> <laughs> The only thing they have to worry about is uh is moose misai, as it were. Moose Ro robbery is like when a guy politely requests that you hand hand him your wallet and you say no and he's like, Oh, oh, oh sorry, okay. mate. So sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry, eh? oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> or, or, but sometimes, because they're Canadian, sometimes that works. The guy just gives them the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, I kind of needed it. It's okay. Yeah, the guy looked, he was kind of hungry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he could use a bite and maybe a brew. <laughs> All right, we're like, what, we're, we're like 10 minutes in and we're already being racially insensitive. This is... Uh, hey, I uh, for one feel triggered. Indeed, indeed. All right, so hey, let, me, let, me, let me ask you guys something. So the first time that I met Clayton, I didn't meet John at this show because I was still like a real young and I was like 17, still in high school and coming into like my music. I think this is like the second, yeah, this was the second show I've ever been to. It was War, War Without End. It was on that War Without uh, that tour at the Parkside in San Francisco. The fifth anniversary? Yeah, that, that fifth anniversary. And it was, it's trippy to me now thinking about it. I was telling Clayton earlier before we started, I'm like, Clayton played the series who opened up that show. 
Vector went on and we, there's a whole debacle with them. But then Hatchet, who Clayton plays with now, um, also played that show. And then it was Warbringer and I got John here and I got Clayton here. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like... It's full circle, man. Like a decade yeah, ago. The yeah. squad has come back together. <laughs> Honestly, it's almost been a decade, huh? It's funny to think how fast that time has gone, man. It really, you know, like the fifth anniversary of War Without End. And then we did the, the anniversary shows for uh, Waking and Nightmares too. Yeah. It few years after that, yep. yeah. Yeah, and it's already however many years after that now, so it's kind of uh, good, man. Now, we're, well, cause War Without End was like right on the front end of, uh, of a slew of releases that they call, uh, you know, the Thrash Revival or what have mm-hmm. you. Right. And so it kind of is a, you know, it's not like the date, but it's it's about, you know, a give or take. Uh, that's, you know, that's about when the Thrash Revival gets into full swing is about when that's coming out, give, you know, give or take a few months. So that also means, mar- marking that also means like the whole thing, give or take 12, you know, 12-ish, 12, 13 years now. Because it was only like in the demos year bo- year or two before War Without End that that started picking up steam. And then like 2008, there was just a slew of uh, Thrash Metal releases from old and new bands. Which yeah. like ha- hadn't fucking happened in, since like what ninety two, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you, you yeah. know that's a good point. I feel like that's kind of strange because pre social media being as large as it is now, you had trends like that, right? Like you had thrash and hair metal in the eighties, and then you had grunge, and, and once those trends were large, the mainstream kicked everything else out, so the, the rest of the genres didn't necessarily exist, right? And now it's not like genres really go away, you know? So like when the thrash revival came back, it's like we're all still doing it. A decade later, it's not like anybody went away, really. Like, all the genres are still there. It's, access to that. it's pretty neat, because, like, I talk to my buddy Calvin about this all the time. Um, and thrash metal is kind of one of those musical genres that I don't think, I don't foresee ever actually purely dying. Because it's just so, like, carnal and, like, pure to something about, like, humans. And, like, specifically, like I think young dudes. Like, young dudes who are kind of misfits, don't know where to... <laughs> mad at everything and like i got no idea what to do this with this and then you get this music that comes through and it's just like a tank crashing through your bedroom with like walls crushing everything in its path and you're like yeah i want to be like that <laughs> yeah more or less that, that's that's the appeal of, of metal to a large extent to me it's just like the most badass thing in the universe if, if you know kind of like if you don't like that i don't i don't understand you on a fundamental level you know? <laughs> like what if you, I, I just I'm like look look at it is it not a great and people are like uh, what? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah so but one thing i talk about a lot because one thing you mentioned there quentin is uh that it, you know, young dudes and one of the things i think actually i think thrash metal and, and metal as a general art form uh w- one of the things i'm into thinking about lately is like basically going to bat for the artistic legitimacy of metal for anyone you know oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i think that uh that's that's something i've been thinking about a lot and basically that sense of uh oh feeling like a misfit feeling cast out that, that can apply to anybody and then also looking at the state of the world and just being dismayed that too can that you know because you experience that sense of like looking at the world on a big scale you experience that is in a personal way and so it becomes an emotion that you deal with you know and uh therefore music (laughs) so that's that's kind of my thoughts about that uh i think it actually uh i think one of the things if i want to put on my pretending to be a historian hat here is going to be uh that thrash metal in the 80s comes from like you know late cold war era like reagan era all the uh economic and political shits going on in the world create fear create tension in people create the music right. um ditto with today <laughs> you know mm-hmm. hey the, the 90s are like a pretty damn prosperous time in america we won the cold war and we have a huge economic boom and and everyone's the richest that they've ever been so maybe you don't need to be that angry um <laughs> but uh, but you know then uh. and the 2000s <laughs> hit and it's just like oh wow everything sucks yeah. again yeah. yeah well it's it's because of shit that was put in place before the 90s in my view but that's they you know, I don't want to get it. We're, we're here yeah. to talk about it. The point is, the point is that, 
the point is that riffs, uh, riffs and aggression and stuff tie into how you're basically feeling, and like more people are gonna feel a certain way if their material conditions are different. And you could compare even something like, like one thing I get interested in is comparing, say, the conditions in like Birmingham, 1978 or whatever, where the new wave of British heavy metal is kicking into gear, you know, and you got the sound of the factory and the drums, which is quintessential to metal versus like I, I don't know something like early hip-hop or something which is also like you know music journalists have long like and is very directly a response to social conditions so i wonder if and i think honestly that when music gets too far from this it ceases to be very good art and then it's a commercial product and then blow me <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> big agree yeah like you know if it when I hear music, like I can even hear like some metal, and I hear and it's like they're not feeling what they're playing. Like they're just playing it, but they're not like hammering it in. They're not throwing their all into it. And you can tell in the recording. Well, know, I think it's that's like, kind of the distinction, you know. I mean, it's like, like you, you can argue the validity of like someone's art form, you know, all day long. As far as like an artist that has integrity or like mainstream pop music not having integrity <laughs> N nobody says they don't have integrity no right. so you yeah, know no, of course not <laughs> right exactly so it, it's it's interesting how a genre like metal is so visceral so it incites and uh influences a lot of those like really intense emotions and i think that's why the fan base is a lot more dedicated to it than so many other genres mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also one of the few places you can like be openly violent with other human beings, and it's consensual. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> I distinctly... No, it's Bosh! consensual. It's like consensual until like that one black dude with the afro shows up and then like just starts moshing. Dude, him. dude, what about that one comment? What that one comment? Oh yeah, oh. I know Quinn. <laughs> He's that one really big black guy that me and my friends call Pit Boss. Uh, oh, when I said that to you, that was hilarious, man. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite hey, part hey, about hey, that if, was if, like... If people know Quentin is Pit Boss, it's not without reason. I'll just say that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For anybody watching who doesn't know, Warbringer is, like, my favorite band, like, ever. And well, I kind of go a little crazy for them. Well, like, <laughs> that's how you and I got to meeting, anyway. Well, yeah, we, like, Chris and I became good friends because of Warbringer. Thank you, John. Well, well and, like, and, well, and ditto with you guys, because basically the thing is, w w in both of your case, you were like dudes who were at Warbringer shows, and I'm like, and, and you're like passionate about the music, so you went and talked to me, and like, so I remembered you, and then I saw you again, and I was like, oh hey, dude, what's up? And now you're my friends. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's how holy that rest. Yeah. <laughs> so man, that, uh, here I am on this webcast, <laughs> and yeah, we're so happy to have you here, man. Fuck yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. And uh, it's cool, and, and it's great to see, of course, people that, like, love what you do. And, like, all you guys are fucking doing shit, progressing the arts of thrash metal further. And, like, you know, there, there needs to be, like, a whole fucking guard of it. There needs to be, uh, like, multiple takes on the genre going in different directions. And that's what creates an artistically viable movement that's going to have, like, new greats and, and you know, a real future uh, is that kind of... I guess creative stew floating around in the scene, you know. Mm -hmm. So every fucking artist who's trying to erect the temples of shred to the highest, mo you know, the highest monuments of just like sweet gems for its own sake, <laughs> that's that's metal to me. It's like uh, it's uh, you know, sort of, it's off in the world. They'll never play it on the radio, you know. But uh, you're gonna, you know, that these are the sweetest records, and it's like you jumped off a cliff off the edge of the world to go and like howl into the void and worship the highest arts of shred that no one else understands, but they, <laughs> they are fools uh, <laughs> for that reason. Well, they so, don't so, understand. They don't understand stuff like you know being war sexual either. Yeah, no, no uh, one <laughs> being war sexual. I, I don't understand it personally. That's I, how I Chris and I met. Means. You didn't know that yeah. we met on a Warbringer dating site. Yes, there, that exists. Oh yeah, yes. no, most definitely. <laughs> All dating of tomorrow, have, actually. The dating of tomorrow. Like, that's gotta have like two users that aren't you guys. <laughs> no, nope, it's, it's just us. We're the only ones. <laughs> oh, okay. We, we just made, made each other happen. admins. Yeah, yeah no, like. No. <laughs> Which one of you made the thing, or did you just make make it? Well, I'm the computer did... science major, so. Yeah. So you made it, and then how did he learn about it? If that if you met through the app that didn't exist yet, how did, uh, does not compute? <laughs> so Chris is the marketing executive. 
Yeah, because okay. he handles all the marketing. You know, mm-hmm. I do all then the. Then you would have known prior. <laughs> no, but like we met through the app. Like we, yeah. like he got hired from another sect of the company that I also run, but I just don't pay attention to. I just like hit yes, and he got hired, and then we were both on the app, and he was the only other person. That we became oh, okay. Yeah. And I think totally slide into his DMs one day on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we just started talking because he shared the the interview and I was like, "Yo, you like Warbringer?" He's like, "Yeah, dude, I love Warbringer," and we just talked. Oh, I know, man. And I, yeah, that's cute. Yeah, like, Warbringer music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was during that Woe to the Vanquish cycle. Yes. Oh, what a great yeah. record that one. Which had that one meme oh. that was like, whoa. Oh, wait, Vanquish. hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're t- I know which you're one you're exactly. talking about. The Bill and Ted one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that was the one when I went and saw you guys in San Francisco. Came home. to I live two hours south of San Fran. So I went up, saw the show, moshed all night, went crazy with X Mortis, you guys in ha- uh, Havoc. Came home, went to school the next day, took my midterm, and then was like, just on a whim, I was just like, I want more Warbringer. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I want to see that again. So I drove out to Sacramento, which is like a three-hour drive for me. And I remember you seeing me there, and you're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, that's, I think that's more or less how I know you. The guy shows up to two two shows that are like a few hours apart and you're like oh okay dude you must care about this a fair amount you know (laughs) for for me though that's like okay if somebody's doing that i feel i should talk to them in general like hey look at how much support they're giving me and my band you know like shit yeah i never do that for anybody i I barely get the concerts anymore these days i'm i'm a lame i i sit around in my house with my wife and cats and i cook a lot of really tasty things but uh, you know that's, you know, that's I think, me i think that really comes with the territory too man like once you spend so many days on the road in a van listening to metal every fucking day non-stop and then you get home and you're like oh a show's happening no no and uh, there's the there's a number of traits of common line music sh- that like one can become very cynical towards if you're yeah. in it too much. Uh, the, you know, the, the shouting over random house music and it's like, you know, you'll hear the same staples, you, you know, like here, I'll have, you, you gotta like, sh- you're trying to talk to someone you haven't, Oh, someone I know that I haven't seen for a while. Let me talk to them. And you got like, you know, walk over the speaker and like a bajillion, exactly. you know, as like louder than the band that was just on stage was just playing and you exactly. dance and, and, uh, you, you know, you're going to wait 10 minutes for your damn beer. It's going to be eight fucking bucks. And uh, then, you know, and, and then if you play in a band where, where you're lucky enough to have people like you, you run into a class of people that are somewhat condescendingly called in, in standard touring rhetoric punishers. And these are people that essentially just like want to unload statements on you and it's like you you are uh you're kind of trapped the the reason they get this name is because one is it basically if you don't want to be an asshole and blow off someone who who likes you and supports your music which you don't hopefully um then you've got to stand there and listen to them like list off concerts in roughly your genre that they have seen or something like that and it's just talking about me everybody oh my god (laughs) We've all been there. If I have to hear another, dude, if I have to hear another like 60 year old dude tell me, like, oh my God, you sound like a death angel. Oh my God, I saw Slayer in 1985 (laughs) at this venue. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, it's like, dude, uh, you think I do this for my life and I don't know what fucking genre I play? Right, exactly. You know, and what (laughs) other bands also exist in that genre? (laughs) Like, uh, you know, if I was the guy on the street and I'm like, you, you know, hey, I, I heard that this was cool. What is thrash metal? Then sure, sure. But, uh, you know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's super weird when it first, I don't know if you guys remember when it first, you, know, you guys are like, honestly, dude, like Clayton, you went on tour with uh, David Ellison recently. And I remember you were going to do like the Possessed thing and that fell through, but you ended up doing something else in Europe, if I recall, right? Well, that was the whole debacle of the virus is that I got the possessed thing. I'm going to do that. And then um, the original guitar player, um, Mr. Gonzalez, decided he was going to do it. And so he plays in Gruesome with Matt Harvey from Exhumed. 
Mm-hmm. And so they were going to Europe. So he went to possess, he asked me to do gruesome. And so I was like, yeah, gruesome, great. So I learned, an, I learned two full fucking sets of brand new music for both of these bands, intending to go on these tours, which were both scheduled for mid-May. And then literally were set to fly out gruesome on the single team. And um, I think like, <coughs> like the 15th or 16th is when they did the lockdown, at least where I live. Um, and then we canceled the tour like three days prior to us flying out. So it was like, cool. Like the last three, four months of prep is just like. It, it, that's that's really unfortunate there, Clayton. Uh, <laughs> Clayton, I'm sorry. Uh, it was, just, it was it, a bummer, man. But, you know, I mean. Oh, man. <laughs> no, it, that's the universe breaking balls. And, and you know, um, I felt it was rather unfortunate that our we announced our album release. We did a second mix on the fucking record. It's like during coronavirus, so we're gonna yep. put out a record and then support it by sitting at home for two or more months. You know, and oh, being on like, Facebook ah, every day. Ah. Yeah, Let me tell. Live webcast. I mean, that's not quite a substitute in my, in my book for standing on a stage and playing the fucking songs. You know, yeah, not, that's not that's what we're about. Right. Did you Let guys me tell consider- everybody at home there, like, that record, like, oh my god, perfection. Like, <laughs> it's like someone researched the art of sucking and executed it on the highest possible level. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's like someone just reached into my heart and pulled music out of it. Like, when Defiance of Fate comes on, I'm just like, oh my gosh. That one was Carlos's baby. I, I had to stretch the vocal range to fit that one because we've never done a ballad verse because I'm going ballistic most of the time. <laughs> but uh, you know that that sounds like a Carlos song for sure after hearing Hexen for so many so many years and then uh, his solo stuff too. It definitely is very Carlos. I hear he's talking yeah. about bringing it back. Well, I, I've I've heard this too. Uh, I I don't know the details now. We've been kind of a, a little strange from each other because no one's seeing each other right now. Um, but what I can tell you is, Carl Carlos has been a writing element in Warbringer since Worlds Torn Asunder, and yeah, I, he's got. Uh, if you look for it, you you can tell which ones he wrote. I think him and Adam and John Locks, all all the three main Warbringer songwriters, you can really tell. They, they got some hallmarks. Adam, it's the dark melody stuff. John Locks has a lot of the like. There's a certain like groove with the like three, four, five chromatic like chun 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 notes that that he does a lot. Used to do a lot with. And then Carlos has a more like structured and orderly kind of way of arranging. Yes. You know, uh, and and actually that that gels with me really well because I'm always thinking like, what's the structure? And and he's like got a structure <laughs> planned out. You know, so that's. Uh, Defiance of Eight, he, he, I rolled into his his bedroom, you know, where he's got a studio, and we're just like, dude, uh, he's like, dude, listen to this, and I'm like, all right, I really like that. I, he didn't, we didn't know if that was going to be a Warbringer song, but I was like, let me take a shot at that, and, and that's the end result, and I actually, for like two or three months, we had a version that was the same instrumentation with the solo at the end, too, not the, not the verse solo, but the Carlos solo at the end, that was all there yeah. on the demo. Uh, exactly. I think, you sent me that version. I think I did. I, I sent you a bunch of shit while well, this was being done, Quentin. Uh, but it was like uh, we it, we didn't have the verses. The vocal <laughs> existed only for the regular voice part, the silent dark, the whole end section. But none of the black middle verses were there. And I wrote those the night before we recorded it. So that song <laughs> came to, it was like written in two parts on my end, and then Carlos had written like. He's one of those guys, Adam can do this too, where they just like write an entire instrumental song, all parts, and then I gotta come right. up with something for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you know, like it's it just really sucks that you guys released that record and like, hey, by the way, everybody, global pandemic, what are you gonna do? You know? And like well, I, no, I was I was gonna say, did you guys consider pushing it back? I mean, so many other bands are doing that uh considered but obviously <laughs> we released it so you can tell what the result yeah. was <laughs> right i mean i'm glad it was i'm glad it's out you know man like that record has been a really big part of like the last couple of months of my life it's been a pretty rough time and i'm like dude this album is like this is this is getting me through it you know fuck yeah sweet jams <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a good segue, too, if everybody at home is uh, listening in. If you guys are on Facebook, if you guys are on Twitch, if you guys are trying to jo- uh, join us in the Zoom chat, 
Uh, YouTube's up. I'm not sure if it's up yet. I've got that confirmation, but we do have donations that we're taking. The donations split between the bands. They split between live music. We are trying to support live music. Uh, we are all like pretty much out of our uh, you know, our supplement income coming in here with with Warbringer, with Hatchet, with Phantom Witch, Apothecary. Sex yeah, no kidding, dude. Everyone's hurting, and musicians are no exception. <laughs> None whatsoever. And everyone's got cap in hand right now. Oh, what a time. Chris, you can tell me if I say this right, because I know Chris Chris is the YouTuber here, so he tells me if I say this right. But uh, you're, if you guys are there, please uh, you know, subscribe, give us a like, you know, put a you know, toss some money in the tip jar. You know, it really, it really does a lot for us. You just like and subscribe. Oh, you, you have to like tell. You have to smash the like button and obliterate the subscribe button. <laughs> the speed yeah. and power you have to of murder the comment section. Murder the <laughs> comment section. <laughs> if this video gets 10,000 likes and we get on trending, I'll get fucking the Warbringer logo tattooed on my ass. Let's get it going, boys. Oh, it's already dude. there. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like where if you wear some of those like certain 3D glasses, it appears. Or like under yeah. a black light. It's, one of <laughs> it's invisible ink, yeah, yeah. Invisible yeah. ink tattoo. So like we were talking earlier and like I know it, this was a really weird thing for me. And you guys can kinda of tell me about your first experience, but I kinda of had my first like mega fan experience. Um it was in Sacramento. You were there, John. I don't know if you remember this, but we were sitting in Sacramento um on that Firepower Kills tour. And I would, some guy, I don't remember his name off the top of my head right now. So if you're watching, you can DM me on Instagram or DM the band and like, I will get to know you. You were a cool guy. Um, but <laughs> Senior was, Dudenstein. Senior Dudenstein was so, he comes up to me. He's like, oh my God, you're Q Minor from Phantom Witch. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. How do you know that? <laughs> you know, and he's like, oh my God, Death As We Know, I love that album. Like, this is my favorite album of all time. And you were sitting there and you started laughing so hard, John. <laughs> uh, then I, I, it, it tickled my fancy a bit. Because, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for over a decade. So, so I've heard this kind of stuff. And, and one has to pretty much take it. In my view, one has to take it like with a genuine thankfulness, but also kind of like don't let yourself believe it too much because right. the thing that makes that guy think your album is so great is that you were really hard on yourself and critical about your own album. So if you lose that, the, the next time that guy won't think your album is so great. That's how I view it. That's a good point. It's a very good point. <laughs> yes, X, that is Q from Phantom Witch. Thank you. Oh, do we have questions now, by the way? That's a, I'll ask yeah, that. Do, do we have my kid? Yeah, if, so if someone's popping into Zoom, you might not be able to get on your phone, John, but I, I, so I'll read them off if you get any. Read them off if, if we have any for the group here. Uh, we could ask Chris about his, his uh, secrets to ba growing and maintaining illustrious beard and uh, perfect oh my facial God, hair. Man. Like, yeah. Look at this, look at this. I can't. Mine I have, like, Native American, and I cannot do it. Well, here's Dude. the thing. I just moved in with my girlfriend, and she's been promoted to head of my hair. I'm head of drugs and alcohol in the household now, so... I have a lot more time to just like give at it with a beard a bit more. That's a fantastic cabinet position for both of you. Head of hair, heads of head of drugs and uh, alcohol. Drugs and, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, and then you got your secretary of state and you're good to go. Yeah, I want to get what well, we want to get a ferret. We want to get a ferret. That'd be sick. Oh, man. Yeah. Ferret secretary of state. Ferret the ferret. <laughs> ferret the ferret. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I was half hoping we'd get like a Fatsy Klein um, cameo in this. Fatsy uh, Fatsy Klein's roaming the lands right now. She did something that was very endearing. So Fatsy Klein's a, a flat, a fat and fluffy black and white cat I have who's motionless most of the time and a little ornery <laughs> in an adorable way. So that's Fatsy Klein. Uh, she, she's pretty great. But we have a smaller cat called Zushka now who's very long for how small she is, a little black cat. And she was scared of a car, so she r ran and hid over the vents. Fatsy Klein left the house for like two minutes, ran over, grabbed Zushka, came back, saving the world one day at a time. Fatsy Klein. Wow. What a um, hero. Fatsy Klein doesn't even Fatsy Klein doesn't even like Zushka. Yeah. Zushka whaps at her tail, and Fatsy Klein doesn't want to do anything but sit there. Zushka has way too much energy. She doesn't even like her, but she went and got her. <laughs> so good, noble Fatsy. Oh, Fatsy's head of head of security, clearly. That's right. Cat. That's oh, amazing. Man. Yeah. I, most of my like things, uh, 
pictures are a picture of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use, yeah. John Keevil, lead singer of thrash metal band Warbringer, cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah. that's just that's just expected all metalheads love cats <laughs> it's it, uh, people delight in that kind of stuff because everyone thinks that like because you listen to metal that you are like a metal album cover all day right you yeah. know right. <laughs> and it's like well i think a lot of that just pretty cool yes but uh i also like much of the same things as you, like delicious food. Or, you know, I am a human being animals. with multifaceted yeah. interest, interests and hobbies Pre- and things that precisely, I do. Precisely, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember one time show. we filmed at my place and uh, I had one of my hockey pictures in the background and someone was like, well, that's not metal. Hockey's not metal. It's like, dude, holy shit, you can have interests outside of the genre of music you listen to, man. Oh, my God, yeah. Like, it's just oh, I draining. Know. I don't want to talk about metal all day. You know, there's other shit in life that that's of interest too. Well, wow. yeah. Films just just lost two hundred subscribers. Look at that. <laughs> that's I mean, not yeah. tr- that's not true. They they want to talk about memes and beer and like all kinds of shit. Honestly, you know, right. the, the metal alone, you can't you can't even do it because like how long do you want to do? Oh, okay, if you want to seriously talk about metal and you're not just like because you know what I don't really care to talk about too much. What some guy in some band said or did. Yeah, I I yeah. care about when they made a record and what that sounds like. That's why I'm listening to musicians. Yeah, uh, it's for the music. That's I know, fucking crazy, right? <laughs> here we go. I mean, that's the only thing. We have a really question. Like, we have a question. With that being said, here I am, a musician talking and not playing music. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, your your, your your instrument is your voice. So, technically speaking, technically. Like, Should I try to deliver the conversation melodically? Yeah. Yeah. Should yeah, I deliver yeah, yeah. the conversation in a melody? I'm not very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Out of my expertise. <laughs> so we do have a question in the chat. They want to know, who is the structural writer of Apothecary and Phantom Witch? Uh, this is from X. This is X from Gershock. What's up, man? Uh, X. Phantom Witch is my baby. Pretty much, um, I wrote just I wrote all the songs on Death as We Know It, or at least had a hand in all the songs, except for In Delusion was our old singer Mike. Um, and he had that was a song he had brought back from an old band he had back in LA. Uh, fun story, he actually grew up with Carlos. He and Carlos were good friends growing up. <laughs> Carlos Cruz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they like had this whole like moment at that San Francisco show. He had come. He went with me. Oh, I remember. Okay, I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 So, like, to answer your question, X, Phantom Witch is mostly me. We're actually a big reveal, everybody. We're working on new material right now. We have a whole new album that we're working on. I've showed a little bit of it to Chris and John. I'll probably send it some to Clayton later, too. He's just hard to get a hold of. He's never online. Dude, I'm always online. You just don't know. <laughs> I'm always so, around. I'm so, always around. with Apothecary, it's mostly you, right, Clayton? Uh, it's mostly me, yeah. Um, depending on the, the day of the week, I guess. But um, yeah, same right now. We're we're doing another record because I have like a I have a studio set up at home right next to the screen that I've been because I've literally nothing better to do, and I have like a productivity fixation, I guess, where I feel like if I if I'm not doing enough, then I'm wasting my entire. Existence, you know what I mean? So I like have to consistently be doing something that I feel like is worthwhile. Uh, Sounds like anxiety. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, bad, dude. We're really bad, I, I, especially with this. Because you it's easy when you when you're like when you have a job that you're getting paid for, you can just fuck off for eight hours of the day at work and be like, cool, I'm being productive. But when, when you're at home during a pandemic, it's quite different. You know. I know. I've I've had days because because one thing I like to do is at first I was like, glory, I can stay inside for weeks on end. All right, let's start up a campaign, you know. And I boot up my computer and I'm like, all right, who are we gonna do? Are we gonna do the Soviets or the British or what, you know? And uh, so then like you know three days later or whatever with with multiple maps conquered, I'm like. Okay, it, it, you know, I'll end up where I'm like just booting up shit on my computer, deciding I don't want to do that anymore, closing it, just repeat with another. Oh, I'm yeah. like, oh god, I need something to do. I'm so yeah. stuck because I was planning on leaving on tour at like May first or something. So uh, 
it's been the only thing that's been keeping me moving is uh, basically ha taking care of my wife a lot, honestly, which has been nice. Uh, that that allows me to feel a little productive, and then um, basically a lot of press for the album, which is the one thing we can do to support it. And oh boy, we're doing it. I'm writing more now than I was than I did when I was fucking doing uh, finishing my bachelor's like last year. <laughs> See, we yeah. got some more in the chat here. We got X. X says he's a nobody. No, X, you're not a nobody. We love you. I love Gershock. I know Clayton loves Gershock. If you haven't listened to Gershock, go listen to Gershock. The band is awesome. They absolutely rip. Heck, if you want to get all philosophical, I am a nobody is a self-invalidating statement. It can't be true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheer at the end up, of the day, tiger. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, you know, it's just a search for meaning in a cold, uncaring world. It is. It is. I, I know. Um, that's so. I, I mean, I'm trying to write. Uh, that, that's something else too. I think metal can actually uh, use some of the extremity of it to actually delve into really emotional shit. You know, it's got the one side that's like stoic and stone faced and like deal with the, cruelty. Ugh. You know, and then, and then you the come out with like when the like, guns fell silent and it's, we're just like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Remember when guns came out and like you just dedicated half an hour of your day to listening to that song? Like morning, <laughs> afternoon, and evening. That's oh, with Defiance of Fate and the Glorious End is another one too. Glorious Dude, End. Dude, you can you can ask my girlfriend. I was really drunk in the car on the way back home from a friend's place not so long ago. I got pretty emotional like halfway through the album. Like the <laughs> drunk like the drunk like, oh man, I remember John talking about this. It was so cool. Aww. <laughs> no, I, I remember I drunkenly explained uh, the entire lyric of Glorious End to, to Chris once, like a year and a half before it was written. So that yeah, was, dude, uh, oh and God. it was the same song. And then Chris saw that, so he's like, dude, wow, you did it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So we got Ghost is Garbo on Twitch wants to ask me why the Phantom Witch hats are always out of stock. Because, because I took all of them. Because uh, yeah, Chris took all of them, and I am yeah. always broke. That is a fact. Uh, <laughs> we pretty much are funding the band completely out of pocket. I actually just graduated from college, so I've been on that college kid uh, ramen ramen uh, <laughs> income, you know. Um, and a lot of it ends up going back into funding things and like paying off stuff like that. And, uh, we're still in the hole on that. Dead as we know, it was actually successful for the size band we are. And we ended up, we we're still, I think like $700 in the hole on it, you know? Yeah, you used to it. Yeah, no. Yeah, you used to it, buddy. <laughs> if I wanted to make money, I would not be playing for that. I can tell you that for a fact. Uh, let me tell you, a decade later, let me tell you, I'm still probably in the hole somewhere. There's money hemorrhaging somewhere that I'm not realizing. But we actually did just talk to the, um, the person who was doing the hats before, kind of dropped the ball on us a couple of times and before tour last year we ended up not having them for tour um because they weren't printed on time we had a lot of time to do them so we were pretty unhappy with that but we have moved to some um the same people who do some of our t-shirts are doing our hats and i actually just messaged them today because i knew this question was going to come up i uh, getting some done um we just don't want to hold a lot of inventory right now because it's quarantine but I mean, I've had like six people ask me like, hey, I want to buy a Phantom Witch hat. And I'm like, okay, well, there's debate. No. I have to supply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me just, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't get one. Yeah. <laughs> now, even like normally now, we would be ordering a bunch of inventory, but we're doing like, e even the stuff we're doing is like sm relatively small batches uh, just because the quarantine situation, we don't, we don't have any touring opportunities. So we don't want to be sitting on like, yeah, you know, sitting on a ton of inventory, really, even though it's normally the better way to do it is large amounts. Uh, it's, you know, the hats are fucking cool, by the way. But my question is, are you going to have an extra jumbo hat version that's for, for people of massive fro status? <laughs> like, because, you know, if you wore it, you'd have to scrunch the fro. But what if you had one that was just it's like tailored super to, huge? It was just tailored to fit the fro and you could have both. You can have your cake and eat it too. Fuck you, old cliche. You know what? Let me, let me talk to them. We're, we'll, we'll, we will we will engineer this. We're going to make this happen. 
Only the few, the proud, can wear this hat. <laughs> and there's like one, there's like the one guy who just has a froze. really big head, and he's like bald, but he just has a really big head. And he's like, oh, finally a hat that fits me. <laughs> it's it's the big. <laughs> we'll call he, it the big brain hat. And that's how he becomes a fan of Phantom Wits. Hey, that's a real thing, though, man. That's a real thing. Like the amount of people that come up to you and you're like, and they're like, when are you gonna have a 16 XL for me, dude? Every show <laughs> somewhere that's happening. Yeah, you know, and what's funny, I always think that Murphy's Law is one of the governing things of the universe. Like, Isaac Newton left that one off his list of principles, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it's like, if you do stock your 3XL or whatever, then no, then you're just going to have it taken up. No one's going to buy it. Don't, if you don't, then then you will need it. Uh, so everything in the universe seems to go that way to me. <laughs> like, and and you're just kind of in a permanent uphill slog against those forces. And at this point, I just kind of look at it like, this is funny. <laughs> you know, I ha I can either let it make me miserable or just like laugh at the way fate seems to play tricks on everyone in like small ways every day with stupid shit. <laughs> We got on Facebook Ben Smith, who is most definitely not in Hatchet. No, maybe. he's not the drummer for Hatchet. I swear. He's in the, he's in a French thrash band called Hache. Hache. Yes, Hache. Ah. Hache. <laughs> uh, he's calling Hache. for a Warbringer, Phantom Witch, and Hatchet uh, post quarantine show. Well, Ben doesn't uh, want to play shows. <laughs> <laughs> ben does not want to play shows. Why is he asking then? Is he is he like Ben's imposter or something? They got a hold of his computer. Is a Russian hacker pretending to be Ben here? What's going on? You know, on? it's probably it's um it's Devin. He's just he's <laughs> it's gotta be because he does. It can't be Ben because he wants to play shows. Okay, no. I will tell you guys off like right off. Patchet or like Warbringer. Everyone wants to play a show with Phantom Witch. I am always down. Like I'll drop stuff for you guys. <laughs> Okay, just bring that up. Bring that up north of the border, though. Yeah, let's Jeez. let's go. Let's go up to Prince George, and then you can fly out to it, <laughs> like clear across the fucking country. There you go. One, one of the labels can cover that. We wanted yeah. to do uh, Canada this past year um, because I did two tours this year. So I toured in with Phantom Witch, and then I also did a tour with my other band, Section Fifty One Fifty, where I play bass. Uh, but Phantom Witch, we wanted to play Canada. We wanted to do one Canada on the border, um, but we can't because couple, like a couple of members in the bands have DUIs. You yeah, know? Canada, yeah, Canada sucks with that, man. Yeah, yeah. Weird about that. we uh, it, it, we used to have to play Canada with Adam Carroll on drums for like a year or two when we had Nick Ritter in the band. E he had an old DUI from like years and years before he was touring, but they would just every time we'd either have to pay like, you know, 200 ish dollars to get him into the, into the country or um, if, if kind of, it seemed, you know, cause it wasn't my deal. So it seemed arbitrary to be all right, but uh, it was like, or sometimes they wouldn't let us pay the $200 seemingly at random. And we'd have to leave them at the border, put them on a bus to the next American city we were going to and have Adam Carroll play drums and, and do the show with one guitar. And Warbringer did that like upwards of 20, 30 times uh, gigs where we did that set up in our career as a result of uh, that basically. <laughs> You want to play Canada? Don't drink and drive. Don't do it. Yeah, Ever. Just, just don't even drink because, like, you never know because they're gonna get you. But uh, right. I, I had an old uh, possession of marijuana from back when I was like eighteen in Moore Park or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was first touring, that was still on my record. It phased off after a time. Uh, but I asked the, you know, so they asked me, and I told them that I did have it because if you lie to them, then they can use that as reason. You know, they have your record, so they're going to ask you if, you if you lie to them, then they can say they can come like, up with why a even ask? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, but uh, no, it's just it, so I told him, and then he's like, "That's not enough," you know. And I'm like, "So is that okay?" He's like, "It's not enough to keep you out of Canada. Enjoy your trip." <laughs> <laughs> wow. One time they turned us around and it was at the Canadian border made us put Nick Ritter back. And so we had to go down. It was like south of Winnipeg. So we're in like North Dakota. <laughs> not, not the greatest place to drop a guy and, and then like drive off. Right. Uh, so we drop him at the border station, North Dakota, come back. But as we're 
turning to do that, the U.S. return border throws us into a windowless room for three hours. And then uh, after that, we turn right back around. Drop, we drop, drop the critter off, turn right back around, go back to the cannon. But just so for weird. no reason, we told them, like, we're just turning around. And, and you could verify that. They, they kept us in a windowless room for three hours. We showed up and, like, had to throw our gear on the stage and go. The borders are not mm. the ally of bands. Uh, one time, the dude from another band uh, uh, had a tiny piece of weed in his pocket, and they they were the headliners. We're touring with them, and just because we're on the same tour, we showed up like to the border like an hour and a half later than they did. But they searched our whole van too, and we're like, ah. <laughs> you know, I, the amount of times I've been through the Canadian border, we have never, not once, not been searched. Literally every single time. Every did you say time. sorry. Yeah, I was, um, sorry, sorry, I don't know what to do, eh? But literally, <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean, I don't know if it's the van we're driving or what, but man, it's like every single time, every time. We always have to go inside. Long hair, man. That's a long hair. Don't do it. <laughs> Hey, no, as you, it would be funny if, as you say, I don't know if it's the van we're driving or what, and then, like, we cut a picture of your van, and it says, like, 420 legalize it on the side, has a pot <laughs> leaf, like, pot <Bob> Harley's <laughs> blasting out of it. <laughs> well... <laughs> All right, so the first band we had when I joined the band that had to have had for like 10 years was this like 97 or 98 Dodge, like 15 passenger, but it was a cargo van. So there was no insulation in it whatsoever. It was bare sheet metal, right? And it had bumps in it. So when it was zero degrees outside, it was like negative 12 in the van. And it was 100 degrees outside, it was 130 in the fucking van. It was the worst van of all time. And so it just looked, it looked like a drug dealer van, straight up. And so we, we got pulled over constantly in that constantly um and then once that van died in wyoming stranded us in wyoming we picked up ben's van thank god which had ac it was a little bit shorter but it had air conditioning it had space for all of us and that one's painted with spray paint red and black like uh, <laughs> so did it say, like. if, if it didn't say pull me over on it it may as well have you know it, it, it's that and we have like a brand new all black trailer because the one we had prior burned in a fire. Jules's house uh, was in Santa Rosa during the fires a few years ago. So we have a brand new black trailer and this like <laughs> like spray painted old van. It's just like, nah, you guys got that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think what, what's the, what's the, that, like straight, short of doing something like actually illegal, you know, just, just like putting cosmetic shit on your vehicle. Um, I, I don't know. What if you wrote like on the back of your trailer, like we are anarchists and we have drugs, and then oh. drew like a, and then drew like a hammer and sickle on it just to rub it. You know, that's not anarchism, but what you know, just <laughs> every everything, all the things you don't like here in one package. You know, I think that constitutes probable cause. There you it go. We, I, so. I mean. I don't know. It almost doesn't because, like, what a person who actually does ever write that in a thousand years? I, I don't know. Maybe I'd like to see some wily or lawyer uh, argue that in a court of law. Oh my god. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So we got pulled over in Utah once upon a time. Okay. And Utah is not a great place to be in general. Sorry, but uh, we got pulled over once, and Devin had just joined the band, our bass player, like a few months prior, full time. He toured with the band before that, but he just joined full time. And so we Ben and I had only known him for like six months, eight months, whatever. Jules had known him for years. And so we get pulled over. Uh, the cops take all of our IDs. And I don't know if Devin's ID was just like expired or it didn't come up in the system or whatever. And so the cop pulls Devin out, brings him to his car, asks him for his social security number, also does not come up. So the cop thinks that Devin's lying to him. Puts him in cuffs, puts him in the back of his truck, comes up to our van and starts asking us, like, how long have you known this guy over here? What's this guy's name? What's his deal? How long have you known him? And Ben and I are just like, ah, uh, 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 Jules, he's your friend, dude. Like, we have no idea. We've known this guy like six months. Why? Is he a terrorist? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. It was, it was gnarly. And I, I guess they ended up being able to trace him from, like, some, some, uh, house that he had owned in West Virginia or something. They found him and realized that he wasn't lying to them about his identity, but it was just like, I don't know, dude. Not my guy, I swear. 
<laughs> All right, we got some questions in chat. I'm going to get to those right now. Before we do, remember, everybody, we are doing this for charity. All of your donations will be going to the bands. It will be going to support live music. Please, if you're on YouTube, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe. Chris over there, he is spreading the love. He is hitting those singles. He, he is missing the love right now. <laughs> He was, spreading the, he was spreading the love in public and he got arrested. Dude, oh my god. Holy shit. We won't, my girlfriend and I don't go to Sobeys anymore because when we did the social distancing stick, we had a fucking Karen watching us at the end cap of the aisles. Oh man, it was ridiculous. And they were like, they had security follow us like on the way out too. All because, yeah, all, it, was, it was ridiculous. But then we filmed we filmed on the boardwalk, and everyone loved it. Like, a, a mom wanted to get involved with it. Uh, I, how dare you, being weird in public. One stick <laughs> length right. away, everybody. <laughs> one stick length. If you haven't seen the video, remember, one stick length away at all times. You don't want COVID. And CBC, <laughs> respond to my fucking email. God damn it. So we got some <laughs> questions in the chat here. I'm going to read them off. So X from Gershock says that Phantom Witch should invest in helmets instead of hats. Okay, you know... I'll think about that. We'll get <laughs> helmets. Mosh helmets with a flipped up brim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, a little I got a concussion one. at an ex mortis show one time. Like, that was terrible. That was, a, like, the first and only time I've ever had a concussion. Strange to believe. Oh, lucky you. Dude, yeah. hel helmets would trigger the mosh pit arm ra arms race, though. Because once you have, like, say, half the dudes in the pit have helmets and the others don't, if you bang heads with one of those guys, you're at a major disadvantage. You better step up your, your mosh weaponry. And then, like, boots, you know, serious boots would become standard. And just, like, you'll have, like, full mosh armor and it'll look like the Middle Ages, but with, uh, you know, more of a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just throw in my hockey equipment, if anything. That's, yeah, little, that's the armor it'll be like I want, hockey, yeah. hockey nights, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I kill for that. Oh god, I just I just made Canada jizz right there. Hockey nights. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hockey night in Canada would never be the same. Oh, you dude, a movie. What if there was a movie called, like, The Night of the Ice, and it was, like, you know, like, King Arthur and the Toronto Maple Leafs go and win the, the championship <laughs> with, the oh, my, dude. Ex, with, with the mighty hockey stick Excalibur that he pulls out of the stone, <laughs> you know? Well, watch the Leafs win the Stanley Cup this year while there's no one in the stands. It's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, well, of course hockey. that. Hey, Murphy's Law. Of course, that would be the year they do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, chirps. <laughs> we, we yeah got, I, oh my god. We got Ghost is Garbo in the chat. Loves that Chris is eating popcorn on the stream. It's actually um, Sizzler's a pice. We can't see it's it. A, Your a, green screen like, mix. kills it. A whole bunch of nothing, dude. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of nuts and shit. Oh man, we know how Chris loves the nuts. Love <laughs> Goblin nuts. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Greek. It's in my nature to be gay, so. I mean, hey, look, that, we don't judge here. That. Yeah, we don't judge here. I'm from like two hours south of San Francisco. <laughs> we don't <laughs> judge here. Me meanwhile, I'll suddenly have a powdered wig and bang a gavel. <laughs> 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 like, you, you know that uh, that old UK thrash band, Savat, uh, Sabbath, uh, yeah. where it's like, it, it's uh, for all those who died, you know, you stand accused of heresy and witchcraft. How do you plead? Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> that character rules. He only appears in the intro of that one song, but that guy rules. You know what he looks like. <laughs> you know, the meanest oh looking God. powdered wig guy you ever did see. <laughs> so we got Suzanne is asking, hi Suzanne. We got Suzanne's asking, uh, what shows have we binge watched during quarantine? Uh, I binge, let's see, I, I, so I'm a big anime fan. I'm a total like Nerd, let me tell you, like, worst case of nerditis. I binged um, Blue Exorcist was one. Uh, My Hero Academia I've been watching. Uh, of course, Rick and Morty. That's best anime. <laughs> best anime. Yeah. Best I've anime seen all right those. I, I've seen all of those ones. Yeah. Um, I watched all of BoJack Horseman recently. That was, uh, that was a trip. <laughs> um, and I, Godzilla. I downloaded... <laughs> Totally legally downloaded uh, all of the Godzilla movies, every single one except for like the 1998 one and like Godzilla's Revenge because those ones are bad. <laughs> but I've been trying to chew through them just like can. I've been getting real hyped for Godzilla versus Kong coming up here. Oh, what about uh, you? Guys? What have you guys been hitting? Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I mean, I, I've watched a lot of live PD because I think it's hilarious. Uh, I always watch To Catch a Predator reruns because that's my favorite show of all time. <laughs> um, and other than that, oh man, the most terrifying line ever spoken by humankind. I'm Why do you have a seat right over there? Oh, I'm Chris, Chris Hansen. The, the I did my the hero. Like... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did my hero. There's a community. There's a community of like To Catch a Predator fans. They're called TCAP, which obviously subsequent, right? Mm-hmm. And apparently. Back. Chris Hansen has like been through some controversies. He like cheated on his wife and he's kind of out of favor with a bunch of networks and stuff now. And so he's like basically trying to extort his fan base, like the TCAP community by like cutting videos off of YouTube and copyright claiming shit and uh. starting his own channel. And apparently Chris Hansen is not the hero that I thought he was, but I don't know. Never meet your heroes. It's a, I, they say, you know, I've had great luck. John, oh, hey, cool. hey, hey, like, hey, look, Oh, yo, it's Fatsy. It's Hi, Fatsy. Fatsy cameo. Okay, she's going inside. Oh. Like, they say, like, don't meet your heroes, but, like, John, you've been, like, one of the coolest. I mean, like, I have your phone number at this point. Like, I can just call you up. And I have. You know, I've been like, hey, I'm not having a good day. And you're like, all right, well, like, tell me about it. You yeah, know? that's happened a couple times. It has. It has, you know, but that's. I think that's super cool. That's super important. And, I mean, like, I'd be lying if I said that that wasn't, like, a contributing factor to, like, what I love about Warbringer, because it's like part of it, yeah, it's just the music, it's phenomenal. But then on the other hand, it's like, you guys are just cool. Clayton's super cool. You yeah. know, Bulls is super cool. I got to meet Dave Lombardo, and that dude was like the nicest guy. I, oh my God, Dave and Gary Holt. You know, you were talking about the other day how cool Gary was to you guys when he uh, produced your record. Yeah, he he was a wonderful guy. He he treated us very friendly uh, for every time I've ever seen him. So nothing but great things to say. And, and you know that that day we're coming from a guy with with his kind of background. I was just like, yeah, it's it's great, and it makes you it makes you happy about the art form you're participating in because you know it's just like these are good. You, you want to you prefer to support good people, you know, ideally. Yeah, you know, like if I meet somebody and they're like they treat me like garbage, I'm like, hmm. Wow, your band's not nearly as cool as I thought it was. Now, you, you know one uh, one that I like that I I like their music a lot, but I really really don't like their fan practices is Winter Sun. I, I like their music. I'm not really into symphonic metal that much, but I really like the way this guy writes it. I think he's pretty much yeah. the best in the biz at that. However. The whole thing they're doing with, like, construct the studio. Here's something that they don't say. Like, hey, so so, you you know what they call a completed and furnished modern studio? That's a valuable piece of capital. You can then – that's a valuable facility that you can now make money from – because you have this wonderful, super expensive studio. Hey, these don't those do, don't just grow on trees. You can charge people to record their music there. He's getting his fans to pay for that, and he can live off that. He doesn't want anybody in his studio. Them. Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe the guy's actually that crazy. But it's like, you, you know... Um, you know what everyone else does? They fucking go in whatever studio they book, and, and they record the record. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. that, that's what they do. And, uh, you know, you try to find the best one, and it's not going to be your dream because it never is. And in your head, it always sounds a little better. And that's, this, guy wants, this guy wants his own studio, and he's got a winter fund to pull from to do it, apparently. Out funder, son, dude. No, but and it's like, and you won't get time to, which isn't even the record I want. I I, I thought the like stopgap one he did the four seasons, the, the first track on there really impressed me. But any you know, but uh, and the first record's better than time. Uh, time is one of those where you, you you can't do the drinking game because if you do it every time you hear the word time, you're fucked. Um, yeah. And uh, you just die. You're just dead. Yeah. It, no, it's yeah. like un, un inconceivable. Even if you're like watering it down, you, you just can't even countenance that. Uh, you know another one, and I'll ruin this for you. The entire Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Anytime they say the word pirate or do a pirate cliche, if you take a drink, oh god, you'll hate it. Um, I actually tried that once. It's brutal. Uh, <laughs> Self punishment. But anyways, uh, it's like I just really hate that, and it really bothers me that music. I, I went and saw the guy's concert in LA. That's a show I went and bought a ticket to. I don't do that too often. And it's like it's. Uh, and then I learned about all that after, and I was like, oh, you know, 
it, it, that that shit sucks. You know? It's one of those things, man. It's one of those things. Like, how how do you strike a balance, or how do you analyze about that? Whose noise is that? Whose noise is what? Like is it like someone talking in the background? It Nobody ain't me. I'm just I'm just sitting my in my yard, is. dude. No, oh, I he- I hear it. It's a fucking noise for sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, it's not me. I'm like in it's my a own fucky house. whooshing and noise and yeah, yeah. It's yeah like I don't hear it. Bashing. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, how do you strike a balance between like, you know, get your bag? Like, if there's a fan base that's one to support you, get get your money. I totally support that. But like, they gave this guy a million fucking dollars to build a studio. Yeah. <laughs> a million <laughs> fucking dollars. Like, yeah, dude, no, I, half a million. Whatever. I know. Can so someone give me a million bucks so I can fucking Seriously. buy a house? You know, yeah, dude, I could, dude, I could chill way harder and still do this. It would be great. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Bro, I could write the chillest record of all time if you guys just purchased uh, me a home. Like, come hey, on. Hey, actually, may, shit, maybe if, if you want me to keep putting out good records, don't give me a million dollars. <laughs> no. If we look at precedent, that'll make me worse, you know? The, the next go, Warburger GoFundMe, nobody's going to donate to at all, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's, let's you know, keep a... Uh, uh, we, we've never done any of that. Uh, it pretty much... We, you know, could we probably, probably if we if we like did that, we probably could raise some money and then we have more money than we, we do not doing that. But it's just like, oh, I would hate. I then I would have to look myself in the mirror and I fucking did that. No, not worth, not worth. It's hard to justify when you don't have a really valid reason to do it. When Ex Mortis's van broke down on the road. Yeah, and they're trying to complete their tour. That's entirely valid. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's great how people will lend support in circumstances like that where it's like a freak accident, you know? Totally. Like speaking of, of yeah. Speaking of not begging, we have a donations box because we're all. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even know I was doing that. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm, we got, I'm, we got I'm a tip here. jar. You guys can <laughs> donate. The donation split between the band to help to go to support live music in the Bay Area. You know, like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon on YouTube. Do all the stuff that they would tell you to do on a Jay Hoff Films video. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So Annihilate much for watching. the subscribe button. <laughs> Make it wish it was never digitized. Digitized. That's the comments with dicks and rip We got some more comments in the. Uh, in the Q and A here, yeah. get some questions going. Yeah, we got some questions. We got Got Beer sixty nine, nice name, very nice. Uh, he wants to know, Q, are you going to see violence in August if it does happen? I, if you know me, then you should already know the answer to that question. When is there ever a Bay Bash concert that I don't go to? That one most never. You go violence back to is like- playing. <laughs> you go back to like the 80s. I'm like, not you, you go back I'm like to like a ghost. Ex- like Exodus in their friend's bedroom the first time they ever played in front of people ever. And like, you know, they got like young Paul Bailoff there on the mic and the Quentin's like right next to him in the, in the picture. Just like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's see. Um, from Varun. Hi, Varun. He's up there. Varun. My boy. He wants to know any songs in the catalog that became fan favorites that maybe you weren't expecting. I can tell you the general for Apothecary. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's literally a fan favorite. A one fan favorite. This one right that's here. That. Right there. This that's it, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, you know. I see what you did, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah like dude. Quentin's in that photo for some reason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Fan favorite songs that I wasn't expecting. I think um, Basilisk. Strange people ask me to do that one, and like I'm the only one who knows how to play it. I wrote that song, that was actually the first song I ever wrote. And I'm blood the only on the guy ice. in the blood band. On the rips. Yeah, blood on, but we knew Blood on the Ice was going to be a popular one. Like, Blood on the Ice, like that was yeah, this is this is primo, this is gold. We're good with this one, but like people ask me to play Basilisk all the time. Yeah, this is like one of my favorite songs. I'm just like, oh, okay, that's like the first thing I ever wrote. And like nobody else in the band wants to do it. I'm sorry, <laughs> everyone else in the band is going to play that one because it's in that it's in six eight. And like vocally, like okay, if you heard it, John, you know, you give it mm-hmm. after we get off stream or something. But like the vocal patterns in that song just suck. <laughs> 
it just I, I, I feel that about some of my early vocal patterns to be fair I, you know, <laughs> I, I got one I, I might, we have actually pretty much chewed through my phone battery so I'm, I'm going to be out either voluntarily or involuntarily soon but uh I got one of these. Uh, Beneath the waves is the one that like the oh, band never, never ever wants to play because it's. It, I, I I enjoy it too, and you know I watched the movie Das Boot, and then I was like, submarines are cool, and I wrote that song. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but it's very. Uh, there's a certain kind of metal riff that we call high school riffs. It's because they're the kind of riffs that metal dudes write when they're in high school, mm-hmm. and we know that because yeah. we were metal dudes in high school. Um, but beneath the waves is super high school, <laughs> you know. With some, and, That's uh, a good and those, yeah, but uh, that one is, uh, yeah, that, that's become a, a stri- like a random uh, fan favorite, uh, that we never play. <laughs> that we hear like every you know, that one we get consistent requests for. It's not any of the uh, you know, it's rarely one of the other like lesser played War Without End tracks, it's usually that one. Which is I want Systematic Genocide to make a comeback. That's the one I want. Oh, well, well okay. Uh, I don't know. That's not the most popular political view nowadays. <laughs> what are you telling me? You guys don't you know, like you're, Systematic you're, Genocide? Like, it doesn't mean it doesn't have a fan base, okay? Your background turns into one of those like Nazi eagles or something. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus, Quentin, this got dark. <laughs> What about with you, play Like, with the theory and then, like, with action? Like, what are you guys' like, those songs? I mean, of course we said the general, you know, but, well, like, I, people other than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was, well, was going to bring that up. It's, like, it, it's funny how, like, you can be a band, and you can, like, write, write and record an album, and you can do all the press shit, and you can say, like, all right, this is going to be the first single, it's going to be the second single, it's going to be the video, this is going to be what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And you can put all that shit out there, and then the entire fan, get, fan base can be like, no, 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 fuck that song, we like this song better. And then you have to make that song single. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so for Apothecary, it was obviously Parting, Parting in Morning, which is like our, our long, like, melodic death metal song. It, it ended up getting posted to some, like, big YouTube channel. And uh, Anyway. And then Hatchet, it was um, a lot of the songs off of Dawn of the End, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I feel like that was the record that really kind of, like, made Hatchet bigger. In a lot of ways, they did a lot of tours after that before I joined, um, and then a lot of songs off the new record too. But we haven't really had a chance, obviously, because all this shit started to, to really play a lot of them, you know. Mm-hmm. So I see one question here in the chat that is specifically for John. I know that his battery's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I can park on my desk if I want to, but uh, yeah. Also, but, uh, I told my wife it would only be about an hour this time because the last one of these I did was three fucking hours. <laughs> Man, I'm not trying to piss off Noel. Noel's my friend. Yeah. So, <laughs> Aldo from Facebook wants to know specifically for Keevil, can you tease what songs from the new album you'll sing on future tours? Um, honestly, I think we're gonna do. Here, I'm gonna plug myself in so I can hang out with you guys longer. Uh, oh, there's Fatsy again. So. Oh yeah. Do, yeah, Fatsy. She's chilling with this. Is, I I cuddle here with Fatsy all the time and read books. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway. Basically, we're going to probably do all the singles. Uh, I'd like to be able to pull out Defiance of Fate live because I think that's a sick tune. And basically, like, I'd like to be able to play pretty much anything off the damn record. And I'd probably like to do a set that's uh, heavily weighted on Weapons and Woe to the Vanquished because that's the current lineup that's there now. And uh, I think it's very relevant to have the band be like, here, you know, because we've had a lot of different members and it's like here's us as strong as we've ever been and it's these guys the dudes that are here now and, you know and, and make that statement because i do think whoa and, and weapons are better than anything we've done before and i like the records we've done before in general uh so i think we'll be heavily weighted towards those when we went out on vanquish we would just do the whole fucking record so we might even do that uh we haven't planned on it and we haven't been able uh. to to meet and rehearse all this either so uh, you know, if we had to tackle something like Heart of Darkness live, that would that would take some work to get the band up to album speed on it, you know. Uh, mm. But so so we're planning to do heavily from that, and uh, pretty much everyone really loves the new record, so we're going to play a lot of the new record. We're, we believe in it, and the fans like it, so you can expect uh, probably at least half the damn album in any live set, and maybe more. That makes me happy. Uh, yes. happy, but it most yeah. definitely makes me happy. 
I would hate it, man. I would hate to be one of those bands that, like, when you put out a whole new album of original material, that you gotta go and like play songs you wrote like a decade ago. And play this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's the like, definition of a legacy this... band, though, right? Like, you put out a new record to stay relevant, but nobody wants to hear it. They just want to hear all your old shit. I'm very yeah, yeah. You know, um, one one of the bands that kind of like. Uh, to some extent unfairly gets that is exodus actually exodus put out some so very strong modern material i think and then yeah. they're, but they're they're like because bonded by blood is the record it is we, you know it's we all know what that what the fuck that means to people um they gotta like you know if they don't play like you know at bonded, least a strike of, of the bonded, beast yeah if they miss um, any of like the main song. Yeah. right right which is yeah, so I, funny sorry go ahead Oh no! They just they got it. So those guys, like you know, they're those are great songs, but they're not like always. I think I don't think they're like always the most stoked to play those ones because they're like, geez, they're the same ones forever and ever. Uh, and it, I'd imagine if it were me anyway, there's me guessing. You know, I don't know what they think, but uh, it might feel like ah shit. So I can't write anything that good again. You know, right? No matter right. what I actually write, you know. So, it's a huge expectation to live up to, you know, especially in their case, because they, I mean, they had been playing those songs for years prior to the record coming out because they were dragging their feet so long, couldn't get their shit together, right? And then right after that record, Bailoff leaves, and then they get uh, Zeta, Susa, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like they, they had all of this like pro provenance and, and like this this scene behind them, and they built this entire repertoire of music, and then it took them like three years to get it out, and then they changed singers, you know, yeah. Like, it's a lot to live up to in that because it's such an influential piece of uh, music for scene. That was, I mean, that was like the story with Death as we know it. I mean, like that album went through like four different lineups within like the time that it was being produced. You know, just like the same, we had the whole album done and then we lost a member. You know, we parted ways with our old vocalist and we had to like, okay, well now, and he was also the bass player. So we had a new vocalist come in. We had to have all of that redone. The guitar player, he got fired like two weeks before a tour, and we, the guy who's on the album, Dave, had to come in and like he recorded that entire record within the span of a week. You know, to, mm -hmm. like, to all the solos that he did, which are phenomenal. I love everything he did on it, but it's a lot of like rock and roll licks because that's what he, he's just like, yeah, that's what I had, and he was like, I don't have time to write, right? I'm just gonna come in here and just hammer it. And he, I mean, he sat in my kitchen back here <laughs> for like. 13 hours one day and we just hammered out that whole record his fingers were just like blood red by the end of that it was it was it sounds rough. like some sounds like some kirk hammett kill them all that is now. yeah <laughs> fly you in last minute so we're coming up on um on wrap-up time here so remember everybody we are live on youtube twitch you can join us in zoom if you want to get in here before we cl uh, close it smash that like button on youtube destroy it nuke it with speed and power unsurpassed destroy it um, hey. subscribe button you know, we got to get in here. Um, and, you know, if you guys can donate, we are all musicians. We are all broke. We know you're broke, too. So we're asking, it's like broke guys asking other broke guys to make us less broke. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but so we got some more questions in chat. And I want to make sure we get through these here. So we got one for Chris, which, by the way, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Chris. I yeah. <laughs> for, 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 for having me on here. Yeah, for, for those who don't know, Chris is Chris channels one of the funniest uh, metal related things out there today, and, and the dude's just rad to hang out with. I've always enjoyed doing. So I, I was happy to see you on here. I just did one with Chris like a couple weeks ago too. Mucho gracias. I was in our old place, and then the fucking pandemic happened, and then we had to move somewhere where rent was cheaper. But uh, so Q, what was the uh, question? So they wanted to ask you. Between Jared Dines, Rob Scallion, Stevie T, or Spectre Stone Studios, who would you rather do a collab with? Um, Stevie T stole one of our video ideas, so we're not going to do a thing with him, even though we offered to do a video with him, and we know we you live in Ontario. Answer our fucking emails, Stevie T. Um, ooh. Okay, Jared Dines I don't consider metal, and the Spectre Media guy, he's from Windsor. I like him a lot, and he... Um, he produces a lot of local bands around here. There's a folk metal band called Proto Cult, Proto Cult that he um, recorded for. And I met him one time. He was a really funny dude. So probably him. Okay, cool, man. So with, we got, I think we got time for one more. I know, John, you got to go. We don't want to make 
It, it's not like urgent. I, I, you know, so uh, my wife started watering the garden. Basically, I just told her I wouldn't like take up the house for hours on end talking about metal. You know, because that's what I've been. I've been doing a lot of that. <laughs> So, so it's totally one. fair. It's totally fair on her part, you know. But she ain't in the house yet, so I'll uh, I'll wrap it up when it's about time, and then I, I think we're gonna have dinner or something. But uh, nice. it, she, she's out watering the plants, and we, we garden every day during the pandemic. We're, oh yeah, so metal. That's so <laughs> metal. Yeah, yeah, right again. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is. It's in Spinal Tap. Bizarre gardening accident. You know. There you uh... go. Wait, wait till you just start doing ad reads. I saw some kid on Instagram that like blurred out my face and wrote, and you guys saw Metallica were sellouts. Jayhawk films are sellouts. Ad reads, what is this shit? Like mm. paying my bills. I know, <laughs> I know. Real, hey. man. Come on. Eating. No, you gotta go on the you gotta go on like the punk rock diet. No punk for profit, dude. Come on. Oh yeah. Punk rock MBA, dude. The, the diet of of, uh, of like shitty beer and maybe food. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. That, but, you know, get your priorities in order. <laughs> so let me chew through these real quick. Some of these are just statements and shout outs I want to get through, and we have a couple more questions coming up. So Nate Firth, my good buddy, he's got fan much tattooed on his arm. He is like the what? Guy. Yeah, no, like number one fan. He says that we need to play a local show in Salinas, our hometown, again soon. When Salinas has a venue and people show up, I will play. I will play anywhere that pays me to show up. 100%. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. People think that like when they say come to blank, they, they don't understand that the, the musician is summoned by the contract that says you will play here on this day for this <laughs> much. That, that's the right of summoning a band. It's, it's not leaving comments in the comment section. It's right. getting a, 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 a rare and strange creature whose logic I don't understand called the promoter to go and, and make this contract appear and like conduct the rights. And then the band with that name shall appear for they smelled the smell of however much money it said on the contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, now they, and now they have announced it and they're professionally obligated to because they can't like just announce a show and not play it. You won't be mm -hmm. a band for very long if you do that. We, we read all of your comments in Indonesia, and now we have appeared in your capital city. <laughs> Wouldn't it work? Dude, that, that would be the ultimate uh, democratization of music there. You know? summoned us. Enough people say, come to Brazil, and like, I just wake up one morning, and I'm like, where, where am I? You know? <laughs> all right, so we got one here. Matthew McCarter from Facebook says, hey, guys, huge fan. I can't wait to see you guys again uh, once this is all over. Bring X Mortis on tour as well. I'm pretty sure that's for John. Ex Mortis is one of my personal favorites too. So yeah, anytime you can get Warbreaker and Ex Mortis on tour, I am with it. Or like Hatchet and Ex Mortis, I'm also with it. And honestly, any of these bands have been bands we've been playing shows with since uh, since They're forever, done, yeah. basically we've since for, since the dawn of time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So we got X who says Chris Hansen is doing pretty good chasing around Onision on YouTube like a Scooby Doo montage until the lockdown doubts his effort. Yeah, that was pretty funny to watch. Oh man, I, I haven't seen this, but uh, maybe I should. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was a show. Let's see. Got beer sixty nine from Twitch wants to know what's everyone's go to beer. Also see you in the pit queue. You will always see me in the pit, and my go to beer is water because I actually don't drink. Oh. Oh. Oh, what a What a slayer. That's not very Hello. low. It's not thrash, man. Beer is thrash. Yeah. It, it is. It is. You know, I'm the guy on j Hop films. Like, I don't drink before shows. But, hey, hey it's because I got to fucking sing the show. Um, oh. But, no, I like, uh, I tend to like pale ales and IPAs. But the real and the right answer is the one that's in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, one that, the one that the drink ticket will allow me to purchase. The yeah, yeah, the, the the one I got's my favorite because it's right. there, and and that's my the zen of beer right there. You you got your paps or your shitty beer or whatever, sure, but you know it's it's there. I appreciate you for being you, Mister Cheap Beer. <laughs> you know that's you're there beer. right now in this like, moment. Uh, with this moment's the only moment right now, beer. <laughs> I will drink you, and I accept See, you, beer. <laughs> I don't like beer, you but taste? you know what I do like is I really love a nice warm drink from one of Tim Horton's many outposts across hey, <laughs> Tim Horton's the official sponsor of thrash metal that doesn't pay anyone who plays thrash metal we just like them a lot for no good reason 
No, and they let me film in there, and they, yeah. they didn't call anyone on me. So I appreciate Tim Hortons for letting us film there always. Tim Hortons, right. it's, what you, it's what you drink when you're in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more question in the chat. This is the final question I think we're going to do right now. Uh, All right. From Varun for Apothecary. He wants to know uh, how's the album coming along, and are there going to be any guest appearances this time around? Uh, I mean, he knows how it's coming along for the most part. I've sent him some stuff. Uh, <laughs> literally, I mean, like, literally, I've, I've got like all the time in the fucking world, dude. I've like literally every single day, I've just I've got all my recording stuff. I have a full studio right here. The, I've got like 10 full songs, guitars and drums already done. It'll it'll be done probably by the end of summer. Right around. So it shouldn't take too long. Guest appearances, I don't know. <laughs> ja Rule. Ja Rule. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, that guy probably is, is hurting for a little uh hurting for a little monetary donations at the moment so maybe speaking you know, of hurting for a little monetary donation uh, moment, that was my segue gonna... Welcome. there we go there we Look go clayton over here clayton's like he's gonna be doing ad reads pretty soon soon That's sponsored content he just asked right now he wanted to know what he can do with all of his expendable money that he totally has right now because he's not broke no one's broken quarantine. If you want to do something, you can buy our shirts. That's right. I took your thing, X. You can buy our shirts. You can go to any of these bands' merch sites. You can buy some merch. You can hit the donation button. You smash that like button. That t costs you nothing. You can smash that, what is it, the, the like, the subscribe, the bell icon. Smash it. D just, start, just start hitting things on your computer. <laughs> yeah, just start smashing stuff, dude. You, you can never go wrong with smashing things. <laughs> You know, it, there's one that I actually want to ask, and this kind of came up on our tour this year. You know, I'm, I'm waiting on Russell to throw me the uh, shut up, Quentin. It's time to stop now until I get that. But um, what's your guys' like, favorite opening? Um, oh, no, you know what? This is a better one. This is somebody on Twitch. I'll get, I'll get to this one later. Somebody on Twitch. Man, best stuck in the band story. All right. This past year, we went on tour. We did the Blood on the Coast 2 tour with Antihero, my good friends. And we played in Tahoe, getting out. That show kind of, there was some drama that went on. And we worked it out. Everything's cool. But we were getting out of there, and the cops had shown up. Um, and we had rented this big Ford um, Transit, you know, this 15-seater van. We had a trailer we were towing. And the cops were like, yeah, back it up. And we are like, yeah, we're not backing this up. Like, can we just... Can you just make a way for us to get through here real quick? Like, nah, you got to back that out. And we're just like, okay, I guess we're waiting. And we ended up missing our hotel reservation. We, were, we had a hotel, I think, like two hours away. And get out to, um, get out to, um, what's it called? Um, in, in between Tahoe and Boise. And we oh, it was like 3 a.m. And we couldn't... Um, we couldn't check in, so we had to just drive all the way to Boise after that show from Tahoe. We were so dead tired. I think Zach just like loaded up on coffee. It was <laughs> awful. The stuck in van story is like the majority of my life. I was uh, gonna say like just... all of 2016, 2015, 2017, like pretty much the whole last it, six years. <laughs> it's a lot of that. 2009 was oh, it was 300 days stuck in van. Um, this last year was like 67. You know, was, you know, we had a bus this time, which, which is quite a bit better, uh, fortunately. But not every time. Sometimes we'll still do the van based on the length of the run or whatever, if it's short. Um, one time, this isn't like for duration, but one time we were leaving New York City. And this was way back when John Locks drove the van down this alley that looked like a freeway on ramp but it wasn't and it was just a construction thing and it went like a hundred yards deep and on either side there's like concrete walls raised right so the van has about a foot and a half on either side to maneuver and we get no room to turn around so basically john locks drove into hard mode ultimate van backing up challenge because <laughs> he had to like back up on this like curved hundred yard like freeway freeway on ramp under construction that he dead ended in and it took us like an hour and a half to back the van out there was so much uh what i'd call austin powers in it where you know <laughs> that one scene where you're like backing the car up a zillion times that's what that's called uh but yeah he did that for like an hour and a half straight it was hard yeah. on everyone's nerves just like no bring it forward turn it back just that concentrated that for an hour and a half that happened <laughs> It's, it's, uh, 
There's a lot, man. Like uh, <laughs> we, were, we were on tour with Raven in Europe once upon a time, and uh, we were in Poland, which like Poland is part of the EU, but the currency isn't part of the EU, and they're not really part of. They don't have the same uh, like traffic regulations and structural rigidity of the road systems and stuff like that. So basically, we we're on a highway. And it told us to continue the GPS, so we continue down this highway. And it didn't tell us that there was construction on the highway. And then it told us to turn around, and we went back. And then it told us to get back on the same highway. It gave us zero options to get to the city that we were trying to get to. It took us three and a half fucking hours to find an alternate route because Poland has no road system that is, like, legible, right? Um, and then there was another time when we were on tour with Doyle in Texas, and we got caught. I think it was in like Hurricane Maria or something like that. Oh boy! Yeah, we were going out of Houston, and it took us. It was a twenty-five hour drive to get from like Dallas to Houston. I think nonstop in traffic. All of the exits were flooded. We got to the venue at like eight thirty, and we were scheduled to go on at eight forty. So uh, did you probably, make it? We made it. We made it. We did it. Threw our shit on stage. We just fucking booked it up there. It was the worst experience of my life, but we made it. Oh, Pros have to do. That's how you know when you're a pro. Dude. Oh. Um, I, I we, knew we had a contract that said we got to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, you were summoned by the contract. We were summoned by the contract hours. through a hurricane, yeah. <laughs> through traffic, through floods. We made it. Oh. Oh, it'll summon you through any shit. One time, uh, one time, in order, to, so we we did a tour that started out in Florida. It was with Dark Tranquility, I believe. It was a couple of years ago. It was somewhere on the Vanquish cycle, and uh, we drove out. So most of the band flew out there, but someone had to bring the gear. So Chase Becker and I rented like a van and drove out there with a van full of gear. Uh, doing back to back shifts, and we kept the wheels rolling for 48 hours straight and made it there. And we stopped for one thing only, and it was because the battleship Alabama is moored in Mobile, Alabama. And on like day two, 7 a.m., I'm like, Chase, wake up, dude. There's a battleship. I'll buy you a ticket. We're going to go look at it. And like, you know, and he's like, Ugh, and he totally didn't want to be there at all. And I'm like, oh, it's so sweet. 16 inch guns. You know how big of a crater those leave. Oh. <laughs> you know, and, and he was yeah. like, Keeble, Keeble, can we get moving again? I'm like, give me one more minute. And then we left, you know. Um, but, uh, so that, that happens. Uh, and then we finally got there. We played one show. And then Hurricane What's-Its-Name happened, and we evacuated the state going northward, and we were stuck in the van for like a day and a half. So you had to miss the, the shows in Florida? Uh, we played one show, and then we sat, like, after sitting in the car for two days, we played one show, then we sat in the bus for, like, three days. Oh, shit, dude. That's I that was, like that. <laughs> that was, that's then we did the rest of the tour. <laughs> what a note to open on. And that's funny. The, was, the same... Sorry, sorry. The same uh, just, it was a funk, yeah. So as much as I love hanging out with all of you guys, man, ah. I do this like all day. This is great. Do this some more. We'll just do this for fun. We don't even live stream it. You can take our shirts are, off. Are people watching? Or are we just doing this for each other's sake? <laughs> oh no, dude! If, if, if people weren't watching, Chris would have his shirt off. Like this would get this would get really, really weird. Really, but really wouldn't. Weird. Why doesn't Chris just take his shirt off anyway to get the views and the likes? You That's know, a good we'll question. Why people doesn't will destroy Chris take that shirt subscribe off? button? They'll destroy. They'll be like, I will subscribe to those chest hairs anytime. <laughs> but we should do an olive oil rub down. Bro, so when all, I do one, all boil rub down one episode, I think. All Subscribe to Chris's and, OnlyFans. And, and, and Kalamata olives, just rub them on yourself. Like, get the squishy, you know, the kind that are like kind of squishy, that like oh. sit in the oil too long, you know, like those, that then like just little dissolve on you. It'll, like, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> I like this. This is well thought out. Yeah, so, then you roll, then you roll in feta cheese and like wrap yourself oh. in a it's giant a Greek salad. Yeah. Oh, it's into a salad. Yeah, dude. And, and then you say in Greek, hey, ladies. <laughs> hey, you know what? Smash that like or, button. Or smash hey that boys. subscribe. Hey Hit us with that donation. <laughs> if you, you know, if we get, if we get um, a million subscribes, then Chris will make that for j Hoff Films. Make it happen. I will make, I will make the feta. I will make the Greek salad challenge happen if we get one million. <laughs> That's Greek what it's salad. called now. <laughs> Greek salad <laughs> special. A new so cultural we got, we phenomenon got, was born that day. <laughs> three more questions that I'm going to do, and they're just both pretty much shout-outs. X wants to know what he should do with this like button, and Yasser Bernal on Facebook, this is in the same vein, he wants to know, how can all people make an effort to support metal artists worldwide, and what's the role that metal, uh, metal and music people 
should do at this point of the virus. Smash that like button. Smash <laughs> Subscribe to us on Twitch, like Hatchet on Facebook, like Apothecary, like Phantom Witch, Section 5150, Warbringer, buy our shirts, buy our albums, you know, and it's tough on everybody right now. Um, musicians are pretty much just completely out of work, right? Now. Any artist, really, you're shit out of luck with this fucking thing. Like, it's yeah, like, it I, haven't been able, like I haven't been able to see Jay Hoffman, like, it's been almost two and a half months now. And, you know, I've had to, like, my girlfriend's had to step up and help with, like, filming and shit. It's, like, it's a, bit, it's a pain in the ass because we could be doing so much more together. Yeah, this new Phantom just... Witch album, like, remotely has been the way I prefer to do it. But, like, trying to just figure out what am I going to do about these drums? I have no idea. You know, and trying to, like, get these songs tight without playing them together has been tough. The, the together part's important, you know, it's, it's tough to do that. We managed to get a lot of the demoing done in, like, one phase, but then we had to hold a couple, like, jams where everybody's getting their parts up to snuff. Uh, I don't know how, we, I don't think we could, like, write right now or record. It seems like it would be pretty fucking difficult, you know? Yeah. All right, guys, if you guys have anything else you want to say to the uh, all the beautiful people at home and also the not beautiful people at home we respect you too we love you just as much <laughs> let's say anything to anybody now be the time to do it because i think we're going to wrap it up uh speak now speak now or forever hold your grease uh, <laughs> yeah. speak now or forever hold your greeks yeah yeah either either the grease like uh like from you know oil or the country or both you know <laughs> You know, actually, Greece is one of my favorite places I ever went to on tour. I, I only went there once, and I, I climbed the Acropolis, and I looked out at the sea, and I shouted, I am in the land of the ancient gods. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it was so sick. What a feeling, you know. Uh, so it was fucking fantastic. Uh, I had all kinds of adventures there. Yeah, all my right, dad so told me. Go for it, Chris. Yeah, my dad told me I was conceived on the Acropolis <laughs> back in, like, 92, 93. Dude, that's a sick origin story. <laughs> you have like the statue, statue of like Socrates going like that, looking down. It's like two people banging, and that's the beginning of the movie. Uh, <laughs> judgment, your entire existence. Oh, is judgment. Man. All right, I got two shout outs I'm going to do. Judgment Number is one. What is this, man? You know? <laughs> Look here. You know? <laughs> shout out number one is going out to. Oh, we got we got Ezekiel Hook. It's gonna go, I got three now. I got one for Ezekiel. Thank you for popping in, man. You are awesome. You rock. You say we ro we rock or Warbringer or Hatchet or whoever rocks. But no, you rock. You rock for being here. You rock for helping support this. I gotta give a shout out to Eric Hernandez, my guitar player. Send me the tracks. I want them. Gimme. <laughs> and um, I gotta send a shout out to uh, my friend Caitlin, who's popped in on this one right now. Um, so gonna let her know I'm Pickle Rick. She got enough. Uh, okay. <laughs> you, you got. You have to shout it randomly. That's the funny. I'm Pickle Rick. Because he says it really loud. That's what makes it funny. Didn't you know? <laughs> funny. I, I kid you not. He turned himself into a pickle. I know. I know. He he did. Wow. <laughs> My favorite right, part of that episode was was actually the like calm uh, psychiatrist at the end. That was my favorite bit of that one. <laughs> yeah, which is like, oh, Rick, you're actually a piece of shit and a loser. You know, you use your power to, to fuck around, and, like you know, and you're and you're miserable. And he's like, uh, the the one where he's king of shit too, kind of goes on that. Oh theme, yeah, you know. <laughs> I wish I had that though. I would I would totally like to have the perfect that place. show for the perfect show for nihilists for sure. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like on all levels except physical, I am Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I think that's all the time we have. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank everybody at home, and thank you know, thank Clayton, thank Chris, thank John. You guys are awesome. Happy to be here, man. For hanging out, dude. Fun. You know, I'll probably right. message John later and just be like, "Yo, dude, like, like, look at this." It'll be like it'll be like some completely random meme in the middle of the night. Nothing to do with anything. Just like you know, John, give me some attention. Come on, man. I w I probably will. I'm probably not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the truth here. You know, people say thank you for your time right now, and I'm almost like, ah! <laughs> done. <laughs> ha! That's rich. You know, <laughs> that'll be five dollars. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
anyway, uh, good talking to you guys. Adios. Uh, check out Metal Records in general with uh, riffs and solos. Go yeah. buy <laughs> Weapons of Tomorrow. It's really good. And be sure to go to your local record store. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh. Disable ads. <laughs> Disable ads on your YouTube videos, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you... Disable ads. And, and if you call anybody heroes, make sure you don't give them a pay raise. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, pat on, the, pat on the back, but never a raise. Oh, we no. can't have that. No. You know, that your haircut, and, Karen. and that fact will keep the thrash metal records coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys. <laughs> bye bye. All right, All right ladies. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. Adios. This is y'all. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank everybody at home. We are going to wrap this one up for the day. I think Russell's listening in. He should be there. I don't know if he's already faded us out, but thank you guys so much for coming out. We will see you on the next. Here we go. Thank you, folks.